Hey, what's up everyone? This week is going to be one of these videos where we talk about a topic that is pretty short, pretty simple and pretty straightforward, but that also manages to be particularly useful. So let's get into it and take a look at the code behind me. And I want to specifically direct your attention to this line of code right here. Because what's interesting here is that in a single line, we are actually calling two different functions. And if we ever need to debug the call site of the second function, it's going to add a slight difficulty. Because as I'm sure you already know, in Xcode, just like in any IDE, we put a breakpoint on a given line. So if I put a breakpoint on this line and then I execute my code, as you can see, the debugger has stopped the execution of my program on the first call site. And if I'm interested in debugging the call site of the second function, I will need to manually interact with the debugger. So to first step into the first function, then step out, and then finally step inside again, but this time into the call of the second function. And while this process is far from being unmanageable, during a long debugging session, having to repeat these steps again and again over and over again is certainly going to be a bit tedious. And as you can imagine, this is where a new feature that was introduced with Xcode 13 comes into play. So first, let me stop the execution of my app and let me also get rid of this breakpoint. And as you're going to see, now we're going to be able to set a breakpoint that will only trigger on the call of the second function. So how do we set such a breakpoint? First, we select the call side that we want to debug. Then we right click on it and we click on create column breakpoint. And as you can see, a new breakpoint has been added just here. And that breakpoint, as its name suggests, is a column breakpoint, meaning that it's not only going to trigger on a given line, but it will trigger on a given line and at a given column. So now that the new breakpoint has been set, all that's left for me to do is to run my app again and see what's going to happen with the debugger. So let's run the app. And as you can see, this new breakpoint behaved exactly as we expected. It stopped the execution of my program, both on the line and on the colon where it was set. And so now my program has been stopped exactly at the call site of my second function. And you can see it first because it is underlined in green. And also if I click into step into, as you can see, we enter the body of the second function. So that's already a pretty cool use case. But as we are about to see, column breakpoints can be even more useful than this. As you can see, I've pasted this new line of code and just like with the previous one, there are a lot of things happening in this single line because we first have an array. Then on this array, we call the method filter and filter is going to take a closure that will be executed for every item on the array. And then on the resulting array, we call map with another closure that will once again be called on several items. And now let's imagine that I need to debug either the code that is executed inside the first closure or the one inside the second closure. Let's try to set a regular breakpoint and let's see what's going to happen. So I'm going to run the app once again. So the execution of my program has stopped. And if I try to debug the code to filter by clicking once again into step into, you're going to see that it's not going to work as we might expect, because the only thing that's going to happen is that actually the execution is going to go to the next line. And so this time we are not just facing a few tedious extra steps, but we are facing the actual impossibility to debug the code inside the closure we passed to filter using a regular breakpoint like that one. And if that kind of breakpoint was the only tool at our disposal, we would have to basically rework our code. So I would get rid of my breakpoint and then I would add extra lines. So for instance, I would put the code to filter on a new line, then the code of the closure on a new line again. And finally, I would put a breakpoint on the line 21. And this time, if I run my app again, we are going to see that we're going to finally be able to debug the code inside the closure. So I'm going to run it just so you can see that it indeed works. As you can see, it works. We can see that first the closure is being called with the value one as its argument. Then if I go to the next call, we have the value two, three, etc. But of course, this was far from being a great solution because we had to change our code, which means having to build the app once more. And then once our debug session is over, we have to put the code back like it was. And as I'm sure you're already thinking, this is of course a great use case to use once again a column breakpoint. So let me 
me put the code back to how it was, and then let's try to use a column breakpoint. So my code is back to how it was before, and what I'm going to do now is select the code inside my first closure. I'm going to do a right click on it, and once again, click on create column breakpoint. And while I am at it, I'm actually going to do the same thing for the second closure. So I'm also going to select the code in the second closure and click on create column breakpoint. So now we have two column breakpoints set in my code. The first one is going to help me debug the code inside the first closure. And the second one helped me debug the code inside the second closure. All that's left to do is to run the code and see what's going to happen with the debugger. And as you can see, thanks to this column breakpoint, the debugger has stopped the execution of my program inside the closure that I pass in to the method filter. And we can see here the local variables. The first time that the closure is called is with the value one as its argument, which makes sense because one is the first element of the array. And if I click on resume, we're going to see the second execution with the value of the second element of the array. Same thing with the third fourth and fifth. And after that, if I click again on resume, then it's the second column breakpoint that will be triggered. So I'm going to click on it. So this time we are debugging the closure that we pass to the method map. So map is going to be called with an array that contains only the elements that were multiples of two. So that's two and four. So we can see that we have the first call being made with the argument two. And if I click on resume, we should see the second call with the argument four. And that's indeed the case. And since this is the last value, the next time I click on resume, it just going to be the end of my debug session. And this is actually also going to be the end of this video about column breakpoints in Xcode. As we've seen, column breakpoints are a particularly useful tool that is also quite recent because it was introduced just last year with the release of Xcode 13. And if you had actually never used a column breakpoint before, now that we've seen just how useful they can be, I'm sure that in the coming weeks, you're going to find a lot of use cases for them. Thank you for watching the video and see you next time.